Here's a weird video. This is a GameStop NVMe. I didn't pay 159. It was actually on sale. Uh, I think it was 120 or 110 Canadian, which is a little pricey, but prices are going up right now. So I thought, yeah, I'll pick it up. It's cool. And what this is, it's an NVMe drive with a heatsink, but it's GameStop branded. This is cool enough that I want to pick it up. I mean, I'm actually, I can actually use it uh, regardless, but it looks really cool. So on paper spec wise, I mean, it looks impressive. 7,400 megabytes per second. That's, you know, Gen 4 speeds, upper Gen 4 speeds uh, for sure. Uh, I don't really know much else about it. It says PS5, obviously it's compatible with PS5. That's kind of how they designed it with the white aesthetic in that. It says PC as well. So, I mean, should be pretty cool. What I'm going to basically do is open it up. We'll have a look at the actual hardware inside. And then what I'm gonna do is put it into my computer and basically just benchmark it and see how it performs. Okay. Just basically it's an SSD. There's nothing interesting there. Nice little packaging. Heatsink looks cool. I have some various heat sinks. I have a nine, uh, I have a Lexar 980 Pro that has a heat sink. It's basically very similar. I think it's gonna be a kind of a similar performer in theory. Um, Okay, so there we go. Nice little package there. Let's zoom in. You can see that there. Nice little package. Metal heat sink. It's kind of cute. I like the white. I have a white PC build, so if you're going for like a all white build, that's kind of cool. And here's the closest analog, I would say. Um, this Lexar, this is a Nexar 800 Pro, uh, NM, NM800 Pro that came with the heatsink, and you can see they're very similar in design, right? This one has lines go that way, this one has lines go that way, but otherwise very, very similar. Looks good. There we go, metal bottom, heat thermal pad on the bottom there to basically get the bottom of the SSD cool. No writings on there. Take that up gently. Again, another thermal pad on the top. I actually want to keep this because I'm going to use it as is. Nice little heat sink, to be honest. Nice uh, one millimeter thick thermal pad. Very good. It's actually branded GameStop right on it. Um, so that's what it looks like inside. 2280 Gen 4 with heat sink. Serial number. Okay, so that's what's inside there. Let me get some more light on this. So. Yeah, so that's a Maxio chip. Can't really read it. Some of the font has come off, actually came off in the back of this. That's fine. Two NAND chips on it and the controller. So that's the controller. Right, and then these are the two NAND chips, so two of them. It looks like there's a spot for two more because there's a two terabyte model. This is a one terabyte model, so the two terabyte model most likely they just have these BGA. Uh, okay, and here's our first look at the results. So I just did Ado Bench here. You can see the results here doing 256 uh, megabyte file size, and you can see all these settings here. And uh, writes are good, we're getting around six gigabytes per second. Uh, you can see there, so. You know, slightly lower, quote unquote, lower than expected, but that's fine. But that's fine. Crystal disk mark over here. Uh, we're getting, you know, as expected or whatever. You can see 7,400, 51, 60. So, you know, great performance. Gen 4, upper tier Gen 4. It's weird because it's just literally called GameStop. Like, that's not what I named it. I named it like GameStop SSD. They literally call it GameStop. You can see there... Uh, the specific specifications of it there. Drive temperatures, you know, good. I ran the test there, averaging 60 degrees. So, I mean, it's fine. Uh, I've been blasting it with uh, these type of things here and it's running totally fine. It's also sitting basically in my computer right next to my GPU. So overall, that I would consider that actually pretty cool. You know, 56 on this one here. Um, so yeah, it's running pretty good. Let's do, now what I will do is do some gigantic file transfer. So what I'll do is I'll just grab here, this is a video editing kind of drive here. I'll just grab the whole thing, really. And we'll move it over, where did it go? There it is. And we'll just start moving it and we'll see what kind of consistency we get. See if the cache drops off as it starts to write and the performance goes down. And then once it's relatively full, we'll run all these tests again here. So we'll go like that there. 
Let's see what kind of real world rights we get here. I'll pause it from time to time and just keep coming back and forth, but it's fast. We can see there. It's reading off an extremely fast Gen 4, upper tier Gen 4 drive, and we're writing to this drive here. So, you know, the reading drive is definitely not going to be a bottleneck here. Lexar 8, NM800 Pro is a very good drive. I have faster ones, but this is fine. Um, let's come back. We'll see if it tanks or whatever, but I'll come back in a moment. Okay, now we're seeing something interesting here. We, so we wrote half. So we wrote about uh, yeah 350-ish, maybe 320 gigabytes straight at that you know three or so gigabytes per second. And then once we got to the halfway point, it looks like we've dropped down a bit here. We're at 600, 500 megabytes a second, which is still reasonable. I mean, it's not bad. Um, you know, it's a lot of SSDs will just absolutely just die. Basically, like crucial P3 plus will just die. Kind of check what kind of performance we're getting. And then what I'll do is I'll just fill it up and do all these tests again and see what it's like when it's relatively full. Okay, and here I am just still writing stuff. I'm just filling it up basically. So we can see here, uh, we're getting pretty close to being full. You know, we're at about 70 ish percent or so, and it's still writing well. This is like some game files that were large, I guess it didn't like those files probably little tiny files or something. And now we're at these bigger files here and it's just writing fine. So yeah, it looks like it's doing really well despite being pretty close to being full. Uh, we'll see where we're at when it actually stops here and gets a little bit fuller. Okay, so there we go. I guess that's basically the results there. We can see here, you know, it's 80-ish percent full. Temperatures look pretty good overall. Uh, I don't know, this seems to have frozen or something for some reason. Um, and then you can see here that we've got you know, even despite the fact that it's about 80% full, still getting really good reads and writes there, really good reads and writes. So other than that specific spot right there, looks like, you know, when it's empty, when it's full, you're going to get very good performance here. So what do I think of this GameStop drive here? Uh, it seems pretty good. Uh, definitely Gen 4 speeds, you're going to get 6,000 to 7,000 megabytes a second read writes pretty standard, very fast. Uh, it looks like it has a pretty good cache. Can't tell you exactly how much it is, but you know, I wrote around 300 gigabytes or so before the it performance tanked and that was writing around, yeah, two-ish gigabytes second or so. And then it kind of tanked down. Uh, but when it dropped down, it only went down to about 500 megabytes a second. So it's not like it went to nothing and is unwritable. So, I mean, if you're gonna be using this to download games off the internet, you're probably gonna be fine. And then in terms of like actually gaming, I mean, it's going to run really, really fast. So in a PS5, you're getting 7,000 megabytes a second. This is upper tier Gen 4 speeds, so it looks to be really good. And the other thing is when I filled it all the way up to 80% or so, and this is important, it still had the same performance. Because if you're going to be using this in like a PS5, for example, or your PC, but probably most likely in a PS5, you're going to plug this into your PS5, you're probably going to just load this thing up with games, right? That, that's what most people are going to do, load it up with games, and then play said games off of it. And it looks like when it's loaded up, you know, pretty close to being full, the performance didn't increase at all. So uh, it looks like it's a pretty good drive. I mean, I'd probably sit this probably around like a Lexar 790 that I tested. Well, definitely works well. It's pretty good. The premium on it being like a GameStop product isn't bad. So you just can walk into a GameStop, pick this up and plug it into your PS5. Doesn't look terrible, all things considered. Uh, it's like a decent buy overall.